Well, Grandic fans, I got something really interesting today. This is a little orange uh, battery powered record player uh, that I managed to acquire today and then uh, spent about five hours bringing it back to life so it does something. Um, it plays 45s, it's an Italian one. Got a pause button there which lifts the arm up in the play. It's got a handle. A little handle here, pretty cool. The speaker's actually at the back. And it's totally portable. <laughs> Not quite as uh, heavy as my grandies, let's say that. Grandy never made anything you could carry with one hand. So let's eject this to show you that it is actually playing a record. A very old Astor record. I won't put anything nice in this. The downforce is huge. But uh, yeah, let's see. This is a good mood now. It might actually... Uh, Bit out to see the slot. Oh, there we are. The trick is to kind of line it up and move it in till it clicks. Yeah, oh, that didn't do very good. There we are. <laughs> Sometimes the record doesn't go in flat, so I've got to keep an eye on it, and make sure it goes in the hole properly. Uh, I've got a few more videos showing you what I had to do, some of what I had to do to bring it to life. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Beautiful case. I just love the orange plastic. That's why I got it. Remember, this is the original cartridge, the original needle, the original electronic capacitors from whenever this was made. From in the 60s, I guess, early 60s. It is a transistorized unit. Probably with a ceramic uh, or crystal cartridge vibe, I guess. It sounded better when I was running it off the power supply, nine volts. A bit more to start it off battery, so probably could do with a recap and uh, another crystal cartridge would make it sound fine, but it is a novelty and it does make noise. And that is the purpose, to show some signs of life and not be totally dead. I think it missed it. it. doesn't always land on the record. So just uh, if I'm lucky I'll get it. Oh, yeah, I'll get it. Definitely sounded better when I was running it with the 12 volt uh, power supply, so yes, could do with some power refreshment work. Pause, lifts the arm up, stop, and now she comes. That's it. That's the old golden operation, and uh, now I'll add on some videos of what I did for five hours to get it to even do that. Yeah, okay. grinding fans, I have a beautiful uh, portable record player here. It plays 45s and it's in really good condition. It is totally orange. 
So I'll put another video earlier when it's back together, hopefully. The problem is the motor is not starting. So I've taken the motor apart and I found the commutator had terribly deep grooves on here. So what I did was I made a thin bit of sandpaper, 400, and I put it on there. Yeah, there you are. And I held it like that while spinning the drill high at high speed, max speed. And that seems to have actually polished it up really nicely. All the grooves are gone. And uh, you can see it's actually uh, really good. So I'll give it a go, see if it works. If it works, this is a good trick to... Uh, fix other motors in electronic gear. That seems to be the only problem with it, apart from the usual grease and gunk. Um, I'll also be taking, if the motor works properly, which is there, uh, I will then also um, take a few, one millimeter off this with, with the same drill. Uh, quite a fascinating little brush assembly. It's got little springs that physically pull it on. Very nicely made. So let's see how it works. Well. This is another part in the saga. It's taken me five hours to bring this back to life, mostly working. Uh, pretty much had to use every known tool and technique I've learned over many years to uh, to get this back to, to life. And basically, apart from the motor and the commutator being badly burnt, which I did send in another video, uh, the motor still didn't work. I had to back off the screws a bit to get it to revolve. So there's definitely issues with the motor But it is turn and then of course every single thing on this unit was gummied up every single shaft lever pulley Was jammed so I had to strip every single thing that moved and Blast it with uh, the old detox WD-40 uh, isopropyl alcohol, a bit of grease here and there, and uh, it's more or less working for all intentional purposes now. So this will be the last video before I put it back in the case, uh, but it's quite fascinating. It's got a little brush over here that sort of moves past the, the cartridge uh, when the record goes in at some point, and that cleans the uh, the needle. So it's got its own little brush cleaning mechanism that shoots up the back it's got a pause button here uh, which is this which just lifts up the the arm you wouldn't want to play any nice records on this i tell you uh, there's a bit of a, a preload on here for the arm it's probably running about maybe 10 15 grams it's incredibly uh, heavy a lot of down pressure um, volume control eject button for manual eject so let's see if it actually will play it's still a bit temperamental but if you can where is it there you go if you kind of get it about where it clicks in yeah, so it didn't click in it didn't click in it's it's got to go in the hole here so uh, it does play, but it's better if you get it to kind of click in the middle. Yep, that's it. When you push the eject button, it sort of throws it back out beautifully. Yeah, it's be it. it the way it throws it out is quite fascinating. Um, the little plunger there in the middle of the turntable that sort of comes up, or that goes away, that goes away. So it's actually go, it goes down with an arm. So there's nothing holding the record. Then this lever over here, which is used to engage and disengage the whole mechanism, pushes the record forward and then takes the arm back as well. It's simple, but it's quite ingenious. Uh, so let me see if I can do it again. Yeah. It should get slowly. Come on, baby. Yeah, no, didn't do it. Oh, that's not a good idea to do that. 
it's hard trying to get it to line up. Uh, so, there we go. I think that's in. It seems to play even though it's not exactly in the hole, which is kind of amusing. But it is supposed to go in the hole, and I'm not sure why it isn't. It's got good volume. It's got quite good volume. I mean, that's a bit pretty distorted. I'm running it on the full 9 volts, which it's expected. volume it sounds better when you actually turn it up but the window is open and it's late and there's people outside Should work vertically too. That's the only reason why I don't. That, 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 that head is spring loaded. Yeah, so I'll try that again. I said that the head is spring loaded. The arm has got a big spring hole in it. Everything's in place. It, I can't. There you go. Yeah, well, obviously the head doesn't uh, like that. It's a bit lifted up. But Put it back down. And it does have an auto stop, which is quite fascinating. I'll bring it towards the end a bit. So it should finish. And that effectively does the same thing as pushing the eject button on here. Wait for it. That's assuming it doesn't get stuck somewhere along the way. <laughs> like that. Come on, go. Oh, so then it's a giant. Oh no, there it goes. And just pop it up. I suspect the cartridge is uh, probably a bit needle maybe worn because it's probably the original needle from the 50s so it doesn't give it a lot of traction but just play most of the time and depending on the record now I'll put it back in the case and make another video yeah just one more video before I uh, pack it up I was fascinated with this it is sensitive to the records some play well some don't there's so much groove they have left but I'm fascinated with this actual record cleaning mechanism so i'll try and get a shot of it as i push this in that's the cartridge that's the knee clean watch as i push the record in watch what it is it scrapes past the needle cleans it and then it drops it down Totally fascinated with this unit. Not too bad for the Italians. Alright, that's it. Next shot. The old girl is going to go back in the case and then give one run before I close up. Pop it up. Well, it's alive. This unit has taken me five hours. Uh, yeah, quite easily. Maybe even longer. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty comfortably five hours. 
I had to basically take out every single part of the mechanism whatever moved had to be taken out degreased sanded nothing moved <laughs> absolutely nothing the thing was frozen in time uh, and of course these rubber mounts all broke off uh, around here so I had to improvise I basically cut some of the old rubber cut it kept slicing it till I made rubber washers and put it on but uh, this thing's only a guide it's running off just the 9 volt power supply because I haven't put it in the case yet but there's no reason it won't run off batteries um, it's taken an enormous amount of effort to get this simple thing to actually play after the mortar was done I had to uh, it's still a bit dicky the mortar it, it just it's a bit temperamental it's just all the brushes are gone needs new brushes but uh, it's it's it, it does play and the volume is quite quite interesting the mechanism is, is fascinating so this will go into its orange case soon but I just wanted to see you show you how it actually works so this thing goes in here it then pushes on this lever over there which snaps the whole thing into life and brings the head forward so watch this don't blink you'll miss it yeah well that didn't work i'm still trying to get the head adjustment correct so let's try it again Yeah, this is what a sum of what it took sitting here for the last five hours to rebuild the mortar. Drill especially very useful. Lots of cleaning fluids. So yeah, I had to play around with it for five hours to get it to do that. But it's now working.